The attack on Pearl Harbor was filled with iconic images of iconic ships suffering catastrophic damage. The film reel of Arizona's explosion is well known as an obvious example. But one of the most famous images of an explosion that Sunday morning comes from a far less famous ship. A ship that a lot of people might not even know about. Or, if they know her name, they know nothing of her story other than blew up spectacularly at Pearl Harbor. That ship is USS Shaw DD-373, a Mahan-class destroyer. Caught in dry dock and unable to defend herself, the destroyer would be hit in the bow and see her forward magazine detonate. The resulting explosion? Well, I'll get into that later. For now, it suffices to say that she managed to return to service, no matter how bad her damage was. The title is there for a reason. With that in mind, let's get into the story of USS Shaw, a destroyer that would not die. To begin, the ship that would become USS Shaw was laid down in Philadelphia on October 1st, 1934, and launched on October 28th, 1935. One of 18 destroyers in her class, Shaw was a prototypical 1930s American destroyer in about every way. Armed with five of the then-new 5-inch 38 caliber gun and five single mounts, like similar ships and other classes. To support those guns, the destroyer also carried 12 21-inch torpedoes and three quadruple mounts, as well as two depth charge racks and a smattering of machine guns. At around 1,500 tons standard and 2,100 tons at full load, Shaw was a fairly large destroyer for the time. Not that this was reflected in her performance, as with 46,000 shaft horsepower through two shafts, the destroyer could reach 37 knots. With those details done, Shaw commissioned into the fleet on September 18, 1936. As is typical of interwar ships, though, there isn't much to talk about for peacetime service history. Some ships would have big events come up anyway, but Shaw is not one of those. She had a quiet life, doing quiet duties, and just generally giving good, but average, service. She spent her initial time on a prolonged period of sea trials and refits, only properly entering active service in June of 1938. Then it was training in the Atlantic, until Shaw would eventually transfer to her permanent home in the Pacific. That was in early 1939, with Shaw remaining in dry dock at Mare Island until April. For the remainder of 1939 and 1940, Shaw would go on exercises off the West Coast. It wouldn't be until February 1941 that she properly relocated to Hawaiian waters. Shaw would remain there on her usual duties until she found herself in dry dock again in late November for repair work. She was still there on December 7, 1941, when the Japanese launched their infamous attack. Completely helpless in a floating dry dock, Shaw was a relatively late target during the attack. During the second wave, she saw several Japanese dive bombers attack her. Of these, three would succeed in hitting the destroyer with their bombs. All three hit Shaw in her forward section, though the direct damage they caused was fairly minor. Two of the bombs punched through her forward machine gun platform, and the third slammed into her port bridge wing. In the grand scheme of things, this was not the worst damage she could have taken. Had it been just the bombs... Shaw would have been damaged, but easily repaired and returned to service. Unfortunately for her, the bomb damage was only the start of her woes. The damage report at the time said that the explosions ruptured Shaw's forward fuel tanks. This is the kind of damage that would be problematic at sea, but was critical when stuck in a dry dock. The leaking oil promptly caught fire, and the limited firefighting equipment available couldn't contain it. Within 20 minutes, around 9.30 that morning, Shaw's forward magazines detonated. The resulting picture is, as said at the start, one of the most famous of the attack. This explosion blew the destroyer's bow clean off, though the damage report states that the keel remained attached. Regardless, Shaw's forward section was functionally destroyed. 
everything ahead of her forward fire room was either completely ruined or beyond economical repair. The destroyer's bridge was flash burned and torn apart, and her forward guns were flat out gone. And yet, for all of that, it could very easily have been worse. Through heroic efforts of her crew and those of the dry dock, the fires were kept away from the intact portion of Shaw's hull. This spared her the flame damage that overtook her sisters, Cassin and Downs. Because of this, the damage to her machinery spaces and her remaining hull was actually fairly minor considering the situation. Not pretty to look at, as you can see on screen, but actually not near as bad as it looked. It made salvaging her easier than it might otherwise have been. By the middle of December 1941, Shaw was pulled out of the water. In an intact dry dock now, the destroyer had the worst of her damage repaired. The remnants of her broken bow were cut off, and a much smaller temporary superstructure was fitted. This hackjaw bow was matched with a simple tripod mast for a bridge, as the destroyer was made ready for proper repairs. Similarly, all of her weaponry, one 5-inch gun for self-defense aside, was removed to lighten her load. All of these repairs would, eventually, see Shaw sail to the west coast under her own power. Despite her much shorter hull form and rather distinctive looks, Shaw still managed 25 knots on this trip. Impressive as that is, it is equally impressive how fast she was put back into service. The initial repairs to get that false bow only took until February 9th, 1942. Her proper repairs in California only took until the end of June. By the summer of 1942, Shaw had a new bow and was every bit as combat ready as her sister ships. Though training would only see her return to Pearl Harbor at the end of August. This service would end up being mostly quiet, as Shaw largely missed out on the major battles of the war. For the first few months after she returned to action, the destroyer escorted convoys between Hawaii and the mainland. It would only be in October 1942 that she joined up with USS Enterprise as part of that carrier's escort which brought Shaw to her one major combat action, Pearl Harbor obviously accepted, in the form of the Battle of Santa Cruz. The destroyer avoided taking damage of her own during this engagement, though she would provide covering fire for the other warships. And, as it turned out, scuttle the ill-fated USS Porter. That destroyer, in the process of picking up the crew of a downed Avenger, was hit by a torpedo. Why possibly the torpedo carried by the Avenger, though sources differ there. I'll get into that when I cover Porter herself. For now, what matters is that the torpedo, wherever it originated, crippled the destroyer. Porter quickly took on water, and within 30 minutes, Shaw was ordered to take off her crew and scuttle the ship. By noon on the 26th of October, 1942, Shaw had done her duty. Porter's crew was taken off, and the crippled destroyer was scuttled. After this excitement, though, it was back to more mundane work for USS Shaw. From November through December, the destroyer escorted convoy runs to Guadalcanal. She continued this into the start of January 1943, before running aground in New Caledonia on January 10th. This would end up becoming something of a running theme with the poor destroyer, both grounding and spending a lot of time in port for repairs. For the moment, though, Shaw suffered significant damage from this grounding. Her hull, propellers, and sonar gear all needed proper repairs. This saw the destroyer back at Pearl Harbor until September, which speaks to how bad her grounding really was. Nonetheless, by October, Shaw was back on her escort duties in the Solomons. That would remain her duty until the destroyer met her old friends again on December 26th, 1943. Those friends being Val dive bombers, the same planes that had struck her at Pearl Harbor. Two of them, this time, dove on the destroyer off the coast of New Guinea. The attack resulted in 36 of Shaw's crew being injured, three of which later dying from their wounds. The damage to the ship was severe enough that she, once again, had to sail for the west coast. And, once again, Shaw was out of the war until May 1st, 1944. Her return to service would not, however, see a return to major action. 
Shaw spent June and July on escort duty and shore bomb armament work off the Marshall Islands. Then she would do much the same during the invasion of the Marianas until late September. Then it was off to the Philippines to support operations in that theater. While the various Leyte Gulf battles were ongoing, Shaw was on convoy duty between the Philippines and New Guinea, leading to her missing those actions. Instead, she would have a fairly standard and uneventful time of things. Shaw continued supporting operations, be it by escort or shore bombardment duty, through April of 1945. As for her last shot at combat, that was setting two Japanese barges on fire on April 2nd. After that, Shaw contrived to run aground again, which prompted her to return to the West Coast for a final time. She arrived in San Francisco on May 19th, where repairs would last until August 20th. With the Pacific War drawing to a close soon after that, Shaw would never see combat again. Shaw sailed for the East Coast, where she would eventually end up decommissioned in New York on October 2nd, 1945. The destroyer would be sold for scrap in July of 1946. USS Shaw was a ship that took repeated hits that required a lot of repair time. For all of that, though, she always came back to service. Blow her bow off? Eh, no big deal. Run aground several times? Just part of the job. I didn't make the Black Knight joke in the title for no reason. Shaw is a ship that would not die. I've even seen a reference to a third time running aground, but without further information than it happened, I can't say much else on that. Regardless, while she didn't see much in the way of major combat, a couple exceptions aside, USS Shaw had a good career, and still managed to earn 11 battle stars. Not bad at all. Now, to round off the video before I end things, I will note a funny coincidence here. USS Shaw of World War II saw her bow blown off. USS Shaw, DD-68 of the Great War, saw her bow cut off in an accidental ramming by Aquitania. She would sail back to port under her own power, have a new bow fitted, and remain in service with the Coast Guard until the 1930s. Funny how that worked out. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.